from the senator from Texas. You know, I would note it is sad that the Democratic leader chooses to stand with violent criminal illegal aliens instead of the American citizens. But even sadder is that he impugns legal immigrants. When the Democratic leader suggests that incarcerating aggregate, aggravated felons, murderers and rapists who illegally re-enter this country is somehow a slight to immigrants, well, Mr. President, I am the son of an immigrant who came legally from Cuba. There is no one in this chamber who will stand and fight harder for legal immigrants than I will. And for the Democratic leader to cynically suggest that somehow immigrants should be lumped into the same bucket with murderers and rapists demonstrates the cynicism of the modern Democratic Party, demonstrates just how out of touch the modern Democratic Party is. You know who doesn't agree with the Democratic leader? The voters of San Francisco. I would venture to say almost all of whom consider themselves Democrats, and yet they just voted out the sheriff for saying basically the same thing the Democratic leader did. For saying that the Democratic Party stands with violent felon illegal immigrants instead of the American citizens. And let's listen to what the Democratic leader just said. Gosh, it would cost too much to incarcerate aggravated felons who illegally re-enter this country. Mr. President, if it costs too much to lock up murderers, rapists, kidnappers, then you know what? We need to spend the money it needs to lock up every single murderer we can. I'm sorry that the Democratic Party doesn't want to spend the money to lock up murderers, and instead, apparently, it's cheaper to lose our sons and daughters. I think we have the resources to lock up murderers. And there should be no confusion where the party stands. The Democratic leader suggested that locking up aggravated felons is somehow disrespectful to immigrants. With all respect, as the son of an immigrant, I believe that immigrants who come here legally who aren't criminals should be treated markedly different from murderers and rapists, and yet the Democratic Party chooses to stand with the murderers and rapists and violent criminals. That is unfortunate indeed. Mr. President, I'd now like to turn to a second matter. This is a matter I have raised a number of times on the Senate floor and intend to continue raising. It is the matter of the human rights abuses in the People's Republic of China. And I'd like to talk about some specific examples, starting with the one-child policy. I want to talk to you about Fen Yian Mei. PRC officials forced Fen Yian Mei who was seven months pregnant with her second daughter to undergo an abortion. While her husband, Den Yuan, was at work, five family planning officials abducted Ms. Fan on June 2, 2012. When she couldn't pay the fine of 40,000 renminbi, they restrained her and forcibly aborted her daughter. As her husband recounted, quote, at the hospital, they held her down. They covered her head with a pillowcase. She couldn't do anything because they were restraining her. The so-called medics forced her to, quote, sign an abortion consent form by inking her thumb and pressing it against the paper. Then they proceeded to inject toxins into the brain of her unborn daughter. After the injection, John May suffered excruciating contractions until 3 a.m. on June 4th. Then, having received no anesthesia, she gave birth to her deceased child.